Dear friends, if you have already watched cost classification part of this video manufacturing account series, you have already watched how to prepare a manufacturing accounts. Now the third part that we are going to discuss now is how to prepare an income statement for a manufacturing business. Now if you have already if you haven't already watched cost classification and manufacturing account parts of this video I would strongly suggest that you go and watch these in order to understand this how to prepare an income statement for a manufacturing account. Now let us start with the headings. Headings are normally given in an examination question, the name of the business, income statement for the year ended. Now basically the income statement is quite the same as we used to study when we prepare a final account for sole trader. Okay, that is single owner or trader business. Most of the income part of the income statement is the same. First of all, we get started with sales. Uh, we make income statement in two columns and these two columns are not debit credit. Instead, are the, these are only for illustration or presentation purpose. First of all, we get started with sales revenue or revenue. So revenue is basically the amount of uh, uh, goods sold in the current period. Then we'll be deducting return inward, also known as sales return or goods return from customers. This basically means the same thing. Uh, we will be getting the net sale figure, but we won't be labeling the net sale figure. The examiner does not label it. Therefore, I'm also not labeling this figure. This is basically the net sales, the sales after deducting the return inward amount. Then we have cost of sales. Cost of sales is basically the amount that uh, we are incurring in order to uh, make available those uh, goods for our customers. Okay, so uh, there's a difference between cost of purchase and cost of sales cost of purchase is or cost of production is Basically the amount that we have spent in buying or manufacturing the goods in the current period, but cost of sales means the uh, Production or purchase cost of the units that we have sold for example We have sold hundred thousand unit and if we have produced 150,000 unit Okay, so the production cost would be based on 150,000 unit and sales would be based on 100,000 unit. So in order to satisfy the matching concept, we'll be needing to calculate cost of sales. Cost of sales means the production or purchase cost for 100,000 units that we have sold. Okay, so we'll be starting up with opening inventory. Now the inventory that we use to write here is inventory for finished goods. Uh, remember that we, when we uh, used to make a manufacturing accounts, we used to write inventory for raw material and work in progress. Now, uh, first of all, the product is in raw material form. It is an ingredient or raw material form. Then the product uh, comes in a work in progress form. And then finally, when we make an income statement, basically this income statement part is for uh, uh, an outlet. It is not for a factory. This is basically an outlet. This is an income statement for the showroom or a sales outlet. Okay. And so in a sales outlet, we do not have raw material inventory. We do not have work in progress, incomplete goods inventory. Instead, we have inventory for completed goods. Okay. We have inventory for completed goods. We have cost of sale. Opening inventory would be for finished goods. Then uh, we're going to add production costs. Now, how can we get production costs? My dear student, production costs can be calculated from manufacturing account part. That is in the last video that we have discussed. The final amount uh, of the part A, that is manufacturing account, the final figure, this would be uh, carried forward to the income statement, that is production cost. Opening inventory, then we have add production cost. Then there can also be a purchase of finished goods. So how come there are two costs? One is production cost and one is purchase cost. My dear students, in our outlet, it is not necessary that all of the goods that that are being sold in our showroom or outlet uh, uh, are being produced by us and us only. Okay, there can be some products that the customer is demanding. But uh, we, uh, as a factory own owner, do not uh, manufacture these goods in our factory. Therefore, what we'll be doing, instead of turning up our customers uh, uh, to some uh, one else, our competitor, we will be offering these uh, products to our customer. So we'll be buying these products from maybe some other uh, vendor and we'll be supplying it to uh, our customers in our showroom. So there can be purchase of finished goods as well. Uh, most of the, the time uh, in the question, we do not have purchase of finished goods. But if the question states purchase of finished goods, this should be added in a cost of sale. Then we have uh, 
closing inventory again this is also for finished goods then the final figure after uh, adding and subtracting these items is known as cost of sale so basically we write cost of sale two times one as a heading and secondly uh, in front of the final amount that is cost of sale if we deduct uh, cost of sale from the net sale figure we'll be getting a gross profit now after gross profit we have other incomes other incomes uh, is any income other than uh, producing and selling goods uh, it can be rent receive or examiners sometimes mention rent receivable or it can be commission receive or commission receivable it just means the same thing or uh, there can be a decrease in provision for doubtful debt there can be gain and disposal on non current assets or there can be bad debt recovered or any other such amount okay now uh, gross profit add other income this is again no name value we need to just write this no uh, label then we have expenses now instead of writing expenses we'll be writing a uh, non production overheads or non factory or non manufacturing overheads okay so any cost that is other than production that is other than manufacturing other than factory would come here in non production category non production cost for example we have already uh, charged 75% rent and insurance that belong to the factory the remaining 25% would be charged here in an income statement okay and one more point uh, here uh, to remember is that if we have accruals and prepayments adjustments as well first of all we need to adjust for accrued and prepayment if there are accrued expense uh, uh, at the end of the year we need to add accrued and if we have prepayments at the end of the year we need to deduct prepayments and the final figure after adjusting for accruals and prepayment prepayments need to be apportioned as 75 25 so what we'll be doing we, we won't be uh, applying percentage before adjusting for accruals and prepayments firstly we need to adjust for accrued and prepayment then we need to uh, apportion 75 25 uh, and if instead uh, we did 75 25 before adjusting for accruals and prepayment then we need to adjust accruals and prepayments also in the proportion of 75 25 this will be a uh, uh, long working so it's better to do this way then we have any other expenses such as administration such as office such as selling distribution advertising these are all costs bad debt also known as irrecoverable debt or there can be increase in provision for doubtful debt there can be finance cost this is loan interest my dear students any cost that belong to uh, other than factory uh, would be charged here in an income statement now the final figure that we'll be getting after uh, deducting non-production cost from this no name value uh, this would uh, becomes profit for the year if the final answer is positive this means it is a profit for the year and if the final Final answer is negative this means loss for the year and in the last part inshallah we'll be discussing statement of financial position that is balance sheet for manufacturing business